I want to talk about resurrection from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So we know that we're all going to die. Nana and Pa, Ma and Grandad, Mummy and Daddy, and even you one day are going to die. But if we've accepted Jesus, Jesus rose from the dead. He was resurrected. And that means that we also can be resurrected. I don't know what you exactly mean. Because to me, you mean when we die, we go, we go to heaven. Is that what you mean to me? No, when we die, we don't go to heaven. We go back to the dust. So, are we... Uh, will you, like... I thought you were saying... So, when we don't die, never... We're, well, I was thinking not saying that, aren't you? No, mm. we, we, we die, and we go back to dust... But when Jesus comes back, we will be resurrected and our body will be, give, will, will be given a new body. And that's what we're going to read about now. So. It's like you've caught a train and you spell, spell, not spell, but spend all your life on the train. And then when you die, you go to sleep on the train and then you wake up in the kingdom and you're... Well, that's right. Death is like a sleep. At your stop. That's right. That's right. So let's read. I want to tell you, brothers, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you've received, and you're saved by this, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. I deliver to you, most importantly, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that's the, the Bible, the Old Testament Bible, he was buried, and he rose on the third day, as the scriptures say. And he appeared to Cephas, that's another name for Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to above five hundred believers at once, of whom the majority of them, most of them, remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Now, what Paul means is that some of them have died, and as you said, Evia, to fall asleep means to die, if you're a Christian, because it is just asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me. This is Paul. Now, if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also is vain. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we said of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise, if indeed the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not resurrected, then Christ has also not been resurrected. And if Christ is not resurrected, your faith is vain. You're still in your sins. And therefore, also those who have fallen asleep in Christ, that's those believers who've died, have perished. So he's saying that it's so important to believe that Jesus rose from the dead because that is the guarantee that we also will rise from the dead and live forever. And so if we say Jesus didn't rise from the dead, well then we've got no hope. So we must believe that Jesus died and rose again in a literal bodily way so that we also will be resurrected. For since by a man, that's Adam, came death, by a man, that's Jesus, so he wasn't God himself, he's called a man, by a man came also the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the firstfruits, then they that are Christ's at his coming. Now the firstfruits is the first part of a harvest. If you sow something, say you sow some strawberries or tomatoes, the first strawberries that come up are your first fruits. So Jesus is like the first fruits, and then we are like all the other strawberries that come up with Jesus at his coming. And then comes the end when he, that's Jesus, will deliver up the kingdom to God the Father. He must be king, he must reign, until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So then death is our great enemy, because we're all going to die. And when you're young, you don't think that. 
But that is so true. This is the great enemy, and even that will be destroyed when we live forever. And when all things have been subjected to him, then the Son also himself will be subject to him, that's God, who did put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. That's a strong proof that Jesus is not God himself, because forever and ever the Son will be under God, and God will be all in all. But somebody will say, how are the dead resurrected? And with what type of body do they come out? What you sow does not come to life unless it dies first. And what you sow is not the, the plant body that shall later be, but it's just a simple grain, maybe wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body just as it pleases him, and to each seed a body of its own. So just as each seed has a slightly different body or plant that grows up out of it, so with us, we're all unique. There's nobody quite like you. And when Jesus comes back, we ourselves will be saved. We will be given a new body, which will be special to us. So is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. Put a dead body in the grave. It's smelly. Remember when Lazarus died, they were worried that he was going to stink if they opened the grave. It's sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul, a living creature. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all remain asleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. When you blink, how quick is that? Just in a blink, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, now mortal means that you can die, immortal means that you don't die, then shall come to fulfilment the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So we sin because we break the law, and that's why we die. But because we're forgiven, even death itself will be destroyed for us. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be strong, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so he's saying that because we've really got this hope of the resurrection of the body, that therefore we should continually be serving the Lord, the Lord Jesus, because it's him who has made this possible. And so, although you're young, you're also sensible enough to realize that life doesn't go on forever, and that people die. And we shouldn't just get baptized because we think, oh, I'm frightened of dying, but because we love God and love Jesus. But this is how it's all going to work out. That we will come out of the grave and we will be changed. The trumpet will sound. Jesus will come back. There will be the voice of a powerful angel. And in the blink of an eye, blink, we will be changed. And this mortal body that we've got that's getting wrinkles and getting older and eventually is dying, this will be changed. It's sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. And that's the hope for all those who have been baptized. Because when you're baptized, you go under the water. It's like death with Jesus. Then you come up out of the water like resurrection with him to show that I will have a part in this wonderful resurrection.